Ah, factoring the GCF. Okay, um, I was working with some of my students today, and, and you know we got caught on a problem where all the last thing they had to do is factor out the GCF, and they just could not find it. So whenever you're looking into doing a problem, and it doesn't have to be a problem that's based on factoring, always try to look to see if you can factor out something. That's a common term that's going to help you simplify it, but um, it'll also help you sometimes make the problem easier for you to be able to do. So when factoring out the GCF, you know, and basically. Um, if we're looking at an expression, what I want to do is determine, and let's just look at this binomial here, something fairly basic to start off with. What I'm trying to do is determine what are, what are the, the variable factors that these two terms have exactly in common, or not variable factors, but what the factors that divide both of these into that they have in common. And so sometimes to help you out, you can just rewrite it. So if I rewrote this as 3 times x plus, 3 times 2, you can see that they both share a 3. So what I can do is I can divide out that 3 out of both of those expressions. And by doing that, if I rewrite instead of division, so when I divide those out, I'm now left with x plus 2. All right? And we can always check factoring out by the GCF by going back and applying our multiplication. Because remember, when we're factoring, what we're trying to do is we're trying to rewrite an expression as a product of two other expressions. So I have to, when I divide them out, I'm rewriting my divisor outside as the product. Again, to check my answer, I just need to go ahead and apply my multiplication. So therefore, I have 3x plus 6. All right. So again, we're looking for the GCF. Try to look at what, what are the exact terms that they share in common. And you know this can go through exactly with, uh, with really anything. Um, that we're going through exactly. Uh, let's let's go through uh, 3x squared plus 9x plus 15. All right. In this case, you can see I have a 3x squared plus 9x plus 15. Well, I know that each one of these terms can be divided by 3, just like kind of that problem. So what I'll do is I'll divide each one of these terms out by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is going to just leave me, or 3x squared divided by 3 is just going to leave me with an x squared. 9x divided by 3 is just going to leave me with a 3x. And 15 divided by 3 is just going to leave me with a 15. Now, in terms of factoring, it's now going to make this a little bit easier sense for me to factor something like this once that 3 is out of there. But it's just not, factoring out the GCF is not always just contained with, um, with uh, dealing with numbers. It also works in, let's say, you know, I had uh, 3x squared y to the third minus 4 x y to the third uh, plus 5 x to the fourth y to the third. OK? Um, so in this case, you could see that, well, what do they have in common? Unfortunately, for the numbers, 3, 4, and 5 do not share any, ver any common factors like 3, 9, and 15 do. I can't evenly divide um, the same number into 3, 4, and 5. So those numbers are going to remain. But I look at this and I say, all right, well, what about my variable factors? What do they all share? And if you look at this, I have an x squared, an x, and an x to the fourth. right? So when we're trying to see what do they all share, well, they all don't share an x to the fourth. That's the, that's the exponent with the highest power. Um, they don't all share an x squared because this is only an x to the first power. So the only variable that they all share is a x to the first power. So when I'm looking to factor this out, I am just only going to be able to factor out an x. Then I look at my y's. And you can see that all the y's are all y to the third. So I can now factor out that y to the third power. So when factoring out the x and the y to the third power, well, x squared divided by x is just going to leave me with an x. y to the third divided by y to the third is just going to leave me with a 1. So I'll be left with 3x minus 4. x divided by x is 1. y cubed divided by y cubed is just going to be 1. And then plus uh, 5. x to the fourth divided by x is now just going to be x to the third. And y cubed divided by y cubed is just going to leave us with a 1. Okay. So again, that's with your factor, not your GCF with variables. But it doesn't even stop there. We can also work with factoring GCF for expressions. And this is very helpful when you get into factoring by grouping um, when you're looking at something. But let's say, let's say we have 5 times x minus 9 plus 2 times x minus 9. Well, in this, you can see that I have, I have an expression that's separated by two different, um, 
two different expressions here. And in each one of those expressions, you see, well, what do they have in common? They don't have you know, variable factors, factors um, as monomials, but you can see that they share a binomial x minus 9. So if I divide both terms by x minus 9, and again, we have to write this as a product, when I divide out the x minus 9, I'm only left with a 5, well, well 5 plus 2, okay? Which, and therefore, you can write this as x minus 9 times a 7, all right? So that would be factoring out the GCF, and, um, and you could even you know, work it in with some things that don't even make so much sense uh, to you. Let's say I had a, uh, a sine squared of x plus sine of x times tangent of x, OK? In this case, you can see that, oh, well, they both share a sign. So you can factor out a sine of x. By factoring out a sine of x, you're only left with one more sine of x plus a tangent of x. Okay? So that's a little bit more advanced example for some of you. But you know, when looking at the factor in the GCF, you just want to find out what, are, what terms do they share in common that you can divide evenly out of each, uh, of each uh, term. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is factoring by your GCF. Thanks.